Joining me now for more on this uh, from Brussels is Karen Fontine. She's an associate professor in geology and also volcanology at the Université uh, Libre of uh, Bruxelles. Uh, thank you so much, Karen, for coming on. Um, so we have the first pictures that have uh, come out. We see the islands are, are covered in ash. What environmental damage do you foresee? Well, the biggest problem with the ash, the sort of very fine particles are basically very small glass particles. So they're very sharp. Uh, they can cause respiratory problems, uh, irritation to sort of lungs, but also to skin, to eyes. Uh, in addition, there might also be some chemical elements such as some um, fluorine, for example, that might be attached to that ash and that might also be released and add to the contamination of the water. Uh, so those are the main problems that might be related to the to the ash. It's very concerning if you say that they're like glass particles. Um, it, so that would yeah. have been breathed in by by the people there. And what would that do yes. to the body? I know you're not a doctor, but I, it's it sounds very scary indeed. Yes, yeah, so it's important that if people uh, have access to masks, that they try to wear them as much as possible to try and uh, prevent inhaling too much of the ash. Uh, particularly people with weak uh, lungs, with weak respiratory systems, um, they should really be trying to protect themselves as much as they can. And you're an expert in volcanoes. Um, what has struck you about this particular underwater eruption and also a tsunami? Well, we had already seen it being in eruption uh, since late December, um, but mostly at a lower level of intensity. And so it suddenly went bigger, basically. Uh, first on the 14th of January and then again on the 15th. So there had been some sort of pre-warning. Um, it had already been erupting, um, but then the big blasts really caught us by surprise. Now, the biggest problem with the fact is the fact that it is an underwater volcano, most of it at least, um, and that makes it extremely challenging to monitor it. Um, mm. Normally with volcanoes, we try to install all kinds of instruments to, to monitor, uh, to, to try and detect changes that might suggest magma is on the move. But with an underwater volcano, that's almost impossible to do. We, we simply don't have the technology available to be able to do that. So saying that, you don't know if there could be a, another tremor in the next few days or, or in the next few weeks? Exactly. I'm, I'm sure that the geological services of Tonga and, and their colleagues, also from New Zealand, from Australia, they will be monitoring as much as they can with whatever equipment they have available, uh, with satellites as well, uh, to try and follow up, to keep making observations. Um, and so they will be keeping a very close eye on this volcano. But unfortunately, it's not, it's not possible to tell whether it's completely over or as the person in the previous uh, testimony said, whether we might expect another, another bigger blast again. And uh, the world uh, was watching, and I certainly was watching carefully, the, uh, the volcano in La Palma recently. Yes. How different will the damage in Tonga be to La Palma? Well, on the one hand, um, of course, the, the, island, the inhabited islands of Tonga are a bit further away from the volcano. Um, and in some ways that is an advantage. So we don't expect very thick ash cover. We don't expect meters and meters of, of ash cover. But as you already noticed, the islands are very vulnerable to even small amounts of ash, much more than the island of La Palma was. Um, so everything really depends on the context of, of the island, of the communities, um, and how resilient or how vulnerable they are. The biggest difference in terms of eruptive style is that the La Palma eruption uh, which was much more gentle, actually, even if it lasted a long time. So it was much less vigorous, explosive, but it was much closer to inhabited land and therefore it had a lot of impact. So everything depends on, on the nature of the eruption, but also the, the, style, uh, the resilience and the vulnerability of, of the communities that are at risk. Great to get that comparison. Uh... Also, thank you so much, Karen Fontine, who's a, a professor, associate professor in geology and volcanology. Really appreciate your expertise.